Well, that being said, everybody, since I have permission, welcome to this week's episode of Secrets of Altera. My name is Brandon the DM, your Game Master, Dungeon Master, interchangeable for legal reasons, whichever term you prefer. And tonight I'm joined by the wonderful cast to my right-hand side, starting with the frizzled, bearded man to my right. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Squatch. You can find me over on TikTok by the same handle. And tonight I'll be playing Aaron Law, the human ranger, who is now an enemy of the kingdom. Yes. <laughs> uh, Stakeums. <laughs> I know it was my time to think of something clever, but in my head, all I heard was, with the Grizz? No way! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stake Saucy. I'm playing Zorthos, the arcane trickster, and I am fresh out of Lunchables and upset about it. Mm. I'm trying to think of something that lines with the Lunchable. That would have been clever for that line. I'm out of Lunchables, and I'm... I can't with a tight ass, so scrunchable. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Game Master Craig. Cut that out of the... Right. <laughs> nope, it stays. No! <laughs> I am Game Master Craig, and today I'm playing Lauston Khan. Are you? <laughs> Maybe for the last time. <laughs> uh, and Thick Pastel. Oh, she she not said... Uh, it's... <laughs> Hi, it's me, Thick Pastel. Uh, my task manager just suddenly loaded, and I couldn't unmute myself, so that was fun. Uh, I'm playing Luna. Uh, try not to go to jail. Trying not to go to jail. Last week on episode... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Last week on Secrets of Altera and our players got into it. Uh, they were in the throne room of Luke... Uh, Luke, Jesus. They were in the throne room of Duke Vasori, the Lord of Elvenglee, the Elven Kingdom and here in Altera. And, and Lauston uh, didn't make people too happy. What else is new? <laughs> that's not only Lawson, that's just Craig. However, okay? before, that's the thing. before the Lawson debacle, Lawson was banished into a harmless demiplane where he met a little girl named uh, Sammy, who explained she was only like 15, 16 years old. She's been stuck here for some time. And she said something about her father, Frederick uh, Bluestone, who is the prince of the original capital of Elvenglade, sending her here until, quote unquote, it is done. After Lassen, after Lassen found out this information, he was poofed back into existence after the banishment spell wore off and landed in front of Aaron and Luna, who were facing off against an Elvenglade elite uh, construct. And some words were said. Long story short, it ended up with the elites attacking the party who tried to arrest them under, you know, Vasori's orders because he believes they are committing treason against the kingdom at this point, going against his word. However, in the meantime, Zortho snuck off and found uh, Colt's brother, who actually runs a fence. He was actually part of the rogues all along, and he got some really cool stuff from him, including what is called an all key, which is a mystical key that can unlock any door that is not locked by magical means. He went through this venture and also got some other materials he could use to hopefully, possibly try to break somebody out of prison if needed, and is currently heading back to, I assume, the Spire at this moment. But back at the Spire, Lauston and Duke Vasora continued to have words and go off, while Tylor and the Sentinels also began to attack Lauston because of his words and his attack that Lauston made on the Duke himself. Wait, wait, giving... wait, 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 that's fake news, okay? They attacked us first, fuck off. I literally said they attacked you guys, and the, you Oh, I attacked, heard it because of the attack you, that Lauston you attacked, made, you attacked which the is king. fake MSNBC you, news. You grabbed the back of the king's neck and were like, plop, with necrotic energy. Oh, after he has been attacking us and Luna, so fuck off. Yes. Because <laughs> you didn't go willingly. Anyways, didn't you go gave, willingly, all right. You gave Aaron and Luna a chance to escape, in which they did, but not before Luna was able to throw a healing word at you, and the doors closed with Duke Vasori standing up, and after your words did get through to him a little bit, he said to himself and to you, well, maybe if I need to find my bravery and be part of this war, then perhaps I should prove myself against the one that thinks that he can take me out so easily as he stands bloodied with his sword next to his side. And that's where we're starting this week's episode of Secrets of Alteran. Lauston, Duke Vasori stands, and he waves off the elites in Tylor. As he stands on this table, see that his sword is at his side. He is beaten. He is bloodied. He is very, very hurt. Then you do see that as he kind of tingles his left hand that doesn't have the short sword in it, some arcana begins to appear in it as he prepares for battle. Wait, he just gets a free attack on He's me? not attacking. This is just the cinema. He's just standing and just like waiting for whoever made the first move. But what would you like to do after his words are said? 
after all of this, and after all of this conflict here, and after the injuries you've sustained, you truly think continuing this fight is in your best interest? The way I look at this fight is one of two ways. Either I can prove myself against you, make you believe that I am a true king and a true leader, you think you can take me out so easily. Or I fall by your hands, perhaps proving you right, but we can also see if you've got the guts to follow through with taking somebody out that you think is not a true leader. So what's it going to be? Who are you to judge that upon me at all? Who are you I, to judge I, my ways of rulership? You are a king and I am nothing. I am not a man. I am not even a person. I have no soul. For being nothing or nobody, you sure have a loud mouth and have a lot of opinions on the and way that And that is I do all things. I'm supposed to be. To keep people like you in check. Like a force of nature. Like the world itself telling you, get your shit in order. You think that I was not put in check when the dwarves attacked my kingdom and blew up one of our spires? You think I was not put in check when I lost some of my comrades in my arms during that attack? Is it not okay to act out of emotion, even though maybe it sometimes be wrong, thinking that you were doing the right thing to protect your kingdom, when our kingdom is attacked and I have to hold some of my people in my hands when they die, and I want to show my people that I will fight for them, we will do what we have to to seek a proper conclusion and answers? I'm the people of this kingdom wanted answers. They wanted retaliation. They wanted to make sure... Did they? Did they want retaliation or did you? They. Did the people want to go out and die, or did you send them to die? The Elves of Elvenglade know that when they go into battle, there's a chance they may die for the kingdom. And a it chance! A chance that you rolled the dice for yourself. Ah, pun intended. Fuck off. <laughs> 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 tense, 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 joke. <laughs> you got me, though. That, was, that go. was good. I had to think about that. It was in the moment. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Sometimes being a king means you need to take a chance. I'm not saying that every chance and every decision I made has ever been perfect. But nobody has ever had the audacity to come into my throne room that I've welcomed them into to have a talk and to laugh at me. You can't handle being laughed at by a nobody? You can't handle when some people make mistakes? I'm here to tell you that you've made mistakes and try to help you see through that you can rectify them. But raising your sword to me again does what? Proves how prideful you are. Proves how deaf you are to the opinions of others. It shows that you are a shallow king, a shallow leader, and that you aren't fit to wear a crown. If that's where you stand, if you still believe that raising your sword to the equivalent of a peasant a no one, a nothing, not even possibly a threat to you. No, no, you're this high and mighty powerful duke, high and mighty, willing to send off hundreds if not thousands of people to die on disinformation. Put the sword down. Roll me a persuasion check. Rolls in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Fireball. 23. 16 plus 7. Ooh. You see that instead of him putting his sword down initially, he does put his hand down and kind of like dispels whatever arcana he was preparing in his hand. And he looks up and he does say to you, he's still on like guard, but not in like attack mode in that cautious, like, middle state. It says, I'm just trying to understand your exact person. Come in here and mock me, laugh, and accuse me of things 
and threaten me mm. and then claim you want to then have a conversation for us to listen that could have been it from the start you want to say that you are just a person you are a nobody but then you want to come in here and act like you're that guy if you wanted us to have a conversation from the start and give us information in a meaningful fashion where we could sit, collaborate, talk, and so. rather than fight, argue, bicker, and dick measure, and why was that not your initial intention? If these are your intentions, then why the attitude? <clears throat> why the persona? Because you were incapable of listening. Because you are an act first, listen later, leader. That is who you are, and that is what you must stop being. You were a this, leader. I want you to I answer am not. this. If, though, I know you're not, clearly, because you don't know what it's like. If you were a leader, thousands of elves and people looking up to you after your kingdom was just attacked, and you have to respond immediately would you look at your kingdom and say i'm going to wait and then deal with the wrath of the kingdom and their feelings and then their lack of trust in their king their misjudgment that they may have towards me or would you act there are so many things connected to this that i'm not gonna just straw man argue with you and say this or that you made a choice do not try and argue with me over your own rationale and your choice. There are thousands, infinite possibilities of ways you could have handled the situation. You've made your choice. Do not try and attack me and say that I have the all-knowing answer. You were wrong. You need to understand you were wrong, learn from it, and work together with people Have I not said that I was it. wrong in my final decision? You could say you're wrong. It's one thing to say something. It's another thing to believe it. To if internalize I believe it. that I was wrong, then why do you think we were sitting down trying to figure out what the fuck to actually do? Were we? Is that Before what we were Before you walked in, yes, indeed, we were. I see here, even now, your pride is so... <sighs> uncontrollable. You won't even talk to me. You'd rather just continue to debate and argue. So, okay. If that's, if conflict, is that really that? That's all that's in your blood is conflict and death, huh? Conflict and making sure that the people of my kingdom know they have a ruler that will do what is needed to make them feel safe. Here's the deal, Vasori. <clears throat> And Lauston is going to take a knee. He's going to extend his arms. I am unarmed. I have been unarmed since I walked into this room. I don't have a weapon on me. Go ahead. He looks Run at your through. hands. As he puts his sword away. Pulls his hands out. You see two flames emit and goes, I don't have a weapon on me. Damn. I am on my knees here in front of you, Duke. But here's my promise to you. If you run me in, if you kill me, which I am allowing you to do, I am disengaged from combat with you. If you kill me right now, I promise you. It will be your undoing. And that is the last I will say. And Lastin just bows his head. Uh, Sorai begins to walk towards you. And as he does, we're going to skip over to uh, Aaron and Luna. <clears throat> you guys are running down the spire. Okay, so that... Do? Um, just as we're running down the stairs, just like, okay, well, that could have gone a lot better. Yeah, it, it could have. Really, it really could have gone a lot better. But it didn't, so... Uh, yeah. you gotta find Zorthos, right? Yeah, we gotta get out of the city. We are... Oh. 
Uh, well, we shouldn't, like, we shouldn't leave the city, really, because we have to uh, be here for Lauston, but we definitely need Zorthos. We can't. He said to run, and we are now enemies of the kingdom. <sighs> well, word hasn't gone out about that yet. Um, <clears throat> you guys would know that Lauston is probably giving you some time with whatever he is doing. You don't know what's going on, but... Right. So, <clears throat> um... We have two options here. We run and leave and don't tell Zorthos, which is a dumb idea. We should definitely tell Zorthos. But we should definitely find Zorthos. Right. But we have a new problem. Well, we have a worse problem. Our plan uh, relied on certain support and certain coinage. Uh, So Mm -hmm. um, while the word hasn't gotten out yet uh, that we're uh, enemies of the state, if you will, because they're probably way too busy to like hey, guards, be on the lookout for these guys. They haven't had time to, like, draw a wanted poster. Um, We might need, I don't know, to acquire some money. Okay. And you know who's good at trying to figure that out? Zorthos. (laughs) Okay, so the plan is, get Zorthos. Get Zorthos to make a plan. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's, that's pretty much always our plan. While all this was going on, Zorthos, where were you headed, by the way? Uh, to get a bite to eat somewhere where I can For see where I could see the entrance. So, like, if Lauston and Aaron and Luna like came out of the front doors, I'd want to be probably able to be see. able to see the entrance of the Floating Tree Tavern, which is like one of the initial ones you went to. It's like up in a tree in the main like area, but it goes up and it, like sits in. The, it's a pretty much a big treehouse tavern. Okay, I'd, I'd go in there. Uh, <laughs> I'd throw on my uh, you know my mysterious stranger disguise. Uh huh. To try and cover the fact that I'm a tiefling. Yeah. Uh, you go up and you're up in the floating tree tavern. Uh, it's not super busy. Uh, all the businesses right now are kind of like really, really slow with the current lockdown and everything that's going on. It's kind of uh, not the best day for business, but it's good for you because there's not a lot of people here. Uh, you go up, there's maybe like seven, eight people just in total, just kind of chilling, having some drinks and stuff. Um, but you do see that there is a barkeep and she goes, oh, hello. Um, what can I get you today? Hey, what's happening? Uh, can I just get an ale and maybe some stew? Uh, I'm going to get a table up top and just try to, you know, get a good side of the view. Love the elves. Go elves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Yes, uh, that'd be three gold. Oh, whew. Uh, and I'm just going to, like, eyeball to see if she cares that I'm going to poor speak. <laughs> You're going to what? Poor speak. Uh, where you like you pretend you don't have a lot of money to get sympathy. Oh, uh, I'm just like, oh wow, three, and I just like <laughs> peek an eye at her to see if she's like interested or cares. That that seems like money she to me. She just kind of looks and she goes, the, the prices are a little higher right now with the current state of business through Elven Glade. And you see, she points at a sign and this says price is currently higher due to current state in Elven Glade. Aha! I give her the three gold pieces <laughs> and I rush upstairs because <laughs> I don't ale. want to miss anything. Yeah, she gives you an ale and she pours you a bowl of stew and you kind of head on the balcony upstairs overseeing the forest of Elvenglade where you can see the spires in the distance. Um, Luna, Aaron, are you guys leaving the spires? I assume you like guys you're talking, you're like leaving. Okay, mm-hmm. Zorthos, do me a favor. Roll me perception check, but roll well because you are like halfway across the city just to see if you can like, hmm, I see a blue person, you know? You said roll well, like you're demanding I roll with you probably, or something? You, no, if you want to see them, you should probably roll well. Okay. Perception for me is plus three. So I'll roll my best. I got a six. Not seeing them. Okay. Uh, I'll start eating and watching. Just looking yeah. out for Lauston. Uh, Xena hops up on your lap. She gets out of the bowl. And you see that she's like standing over top of the bowl of stew. Just like, me? Yeah, you gotta tear it up. <laughs> Yeah, I'll Zeta eat just sticks her. her face like in the bowl. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Luna, Aaron, where would you guys like to go? <clears throat> We're looking for one Zorthos. Where would a Zorthos go? Uh, to a tavern, probably. <laughs> ah, you know what? I can figure that out. I'm not even going to say this meta because it's pretty. You guys seems, know. Well. I was about to yeah. say. Is yeah, you that guys, meta? It's not. That's what I'm saying. It's not. Seems you guys pretty, know him, pretty, you know him pretty very decent. well by now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's what I'll do. Uh, so we're gonna try to go to a tavern. What's the nearest tavern? tavern? 
So there's a couple in your buy, but the one that you were familiar with again is the floating tree. Uh, that's the right. one where you all went to initially, um, mm -hmm. in the first kind of like day uh, or the first couple episodes. Uh, that's the one yep. that you like really know of. Uh, go ahead and roll me both of you like insight checks if you could. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna give a nine. Okay, Luna, well, no, you have no clue where Zorth is going to be. Uh, Aaron, or like which time? Uh, insight, you said. Yes. Uh, 17 plus 5, what okay, is that? Okay, yes. Uh, Aaron, uh, Luna's a little puzzled. Uh, however, you, knowing Zorthos and the bond that you've had with him and connected with him over the past, you know, venture, uh, you know his personality pretty well, and you guys do kind of like, you know, think on similar terms, and you probably think like, okay, if I were Zorthos, he's probably going to go to some place we have mutually been to before. Mm -hmm. Floating tree. The floating tree tavern. Oh, I was about to say, I don't remember seeing any trees floating. No. No, no, no. The tavern. Oh, okay. Uh, you continue making your way through Elvenglade. Again, news has not gotten out of what exactly has happened. It's been pretty well contained inside the spire. And you make your way to the floating tree tavern. As you walk inside and get uh, closer and closer, Zorthos, you would see as they kind of like walk down the road. They're pretty easy to spot at this point. Oh, this I would so, definitely give the signal. Yeah, and you guys hear like, what's... Ah! You guys hear, ah, as you look up and you see that Zorthos has got a, his feet, like, up I on just the balcony, like, like, waving with Xena, like, on her back with a fat belly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to lean over to Luna. It's like, okay, so this board hasn't gotten out. We're just going to play this casual, okay? Okay. 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 Going to walk into the tavern, go over to Zorthos' table. Uh, I'm going to sit down. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey. Things have gone very poorly. We need to leave the city as fast as possible. I knew that this was going to happen. <laughs> I <laughs> jump up from the table <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Oh, why are we being quiet? Shh. Oh, does nobody know? What did we do? Are we bad? Did we get in trouble? <clears throat> Where the fuck is Lauston? It was Lauston. I knew it was going to be Lauston. I was warned the combination you guys. It was the combination Lauston. of a few things. Calm down. Let me speak. So it was bad. a combination. It was a combination of a few things. Lausness. <laughs> How's that? Plus one. Lauston is plus coming. What? <laughs> <laughs> we should leave the city. Okay. <laughs> What's going on, Aaron? I'm not even gonna dignify the rest of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking away from the table. No, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, tell me his sins. <laughs> coming. Um, Luna, thank God the stream is ready to mature. Jesus Christ, just, just spit yeah. it out. <laughs> okay, well, um, just because of the, uh, because this is sensitive information, okay. uh, I'm going to share it. In, I'm going to detail everything to uh, Zorthos in his brain. Everybody feels like that's appropriate to do to me. <laughs> I, okay, I just listen. <laughs> I don't say anything. God. I just detail everything that happened that I saw. Fuck. And you guys left Lauston? He said he didn't want help. And... He said... Uh, do you think that they'll recognize me? Honestly? And I'm going to do my best to cover up in this disguise and see if it helps at all. Honestly, it might make things worse. I don't know. I might look really suspicious in there. I was about to say, yeah. really, the only people that would recognize kind of... you as... No, they would recognize you as the lawyer. Right. Should I lawyer him out of this? Nope, that's not an option. No. It's that bad. We, we, we have gone nuclear. Yes, I don't think that we're ever going to be able to verbally convince Visori of any of our plans or decisions. When I was I was saying to Aaron before we uh, left, or as we were on our way here, that we still need funding. We and, need to get to Haxos. Yeah. We need to get to Haxos, but we need funding for that. Why did we come here? We came here to make enemies. No, we came. We nope. are so fucked. Do you understand that we have an entire kingdom? An entire kingdom? Where are mm -hmm. we even going to get a fucking boat? That's that. Yeah. Well, we need money for that. Are terrorists. Kind of, yeah. Would you not say that so loud? I like look around to make sure nobody's listening and I'm just like, 
you guys come here. And I'm gonna start pulling like these raggedy ass pieces of clothes out of my bag and try to disguise them out, like as best as I can. Just like cover up markings on their bodies that would show them as them, uh, try to cover their heads. And so do y'all have a plan to get Lauston? No. Um. Okay. No, that's fine. I can work no, with no things. That. Things we were things were going south very fast, and he said to run. Lauston said to run. Yes. He said he didn't want help. Well, well, no. He's been trying to 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 to, to, to just fight and fight and fight. He's probably going to get murdered in there. You guys, we need to go back. We can't just leave them there. And then we get thrown in a prison cell or executed and set an example for, um, hmm, then who's going to fucking stop the specter? So we leave Lauston behind? I want to go back and get him. I don't want to leave him behind. Right. But we go back and fight the royal no, guards. No, let's and not the... fight. Let's submit. But if we get locked up, we can't. Well, we might get locked up, but maybe we can get ourselves out of there. But at least we'd have a chance as a group if we just leave Lawson by himself. He's we have found shiny blue rocks owned by otters that had better senses of survival than Lawson. If we leave him there, he's going to be imprisoned or he's going to die. We can't leave him here or. I mean, I I know that it's really selfish to feel that we have to go back and get him because there's other lives at stake, but I, I don't know if leaving this kingdom enemies of the entire kingdom of an entire race is a uh-huh. good luck. Maybe this is my, we should this throw is ourselves home. down and beg for forgiveness. Ah, uh, begging for forgiveness means being thrown in a cell. And even if we do escape, we're still enemies of the state because we're now fugitives. Okay. I've been getting gear to break you guys out of prison. I think I can convince Duke Th- Th- Thesauri that I'm worth more to him than Lauston is. Maybe I give myself to him, and if I get locked up, boom, I'll break out. I'll find you guys. We've already... Well, he... You, <clears throat> I know that I explained what happened, but you have to understand the Sora is like that was a lot of information to process all at once i know it it, it just seems that the Sora is no matter what anybody says going to be against lauston and likely there's nothing we can do to change that okay wait if any if anybody out of the, out of the four of us is is the most likely to break out of prison it's definitely you yeah i'd say that's apt I just, if we leave Lauston, he's gone. I was about to say, Luna, if... I don't want to lose anybody else, okay? Bottom line is, I don't want to lose anybody else. Fuck everything else that's going on. I'm not losing anybody else. Okay. Look, y'all are together. I don't have anybody anyway. The only friend I've ever had is in this book. And he's actually pretty chatty nowadays. I could do a few days until it's time for me to get out. You guys need to go to Haxos. I don't see any other way of getting Lawson out of this. He might have dug this hole, but he'd jump in and push me out of a hole. I know he would. Yeah. It's, I have to. Okay, so how are we getting up there? I'm going to walk through the front door. We are walking through the front door? Oh, you guys. Is, is, where's Lawson right now? He's still up there. Let's go. We, we just okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. We have we have to we can't leave him. That seems wrong. He's got to see some type of. Maybe let me do the talking and maybe fucking calm Lauston down as much as possible. Like if he's going to be a war machine, he's going to be our war machine. We need to get a leash on him somewhere and start aiming him in the right fucking direction because this is ridiculous. Yes. Let's That's go get I our war machine do, but back. That didn't really go down all that well. All right. <sighs> well, I've read a bunch of books. I'm ready for this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start leading the way. Back to the spire. Duke Vasori approaches Lawson. Stand there. 
head down on your knees, arms wide open, and takes the tip of his sword, puts it like under your chin, and he raises your head up. He looks at you and says, I am no murderer, therefore I will not kill a man that is unarmed, that is giving himself to me in this manner or fashion. Maybe part of you is somewhat correct in the fact that I have cost way too many lives. I'm not going to kill somebody that stands before me, offering themselves and have another life underneath my belt. However, as he looks at your shoulder and sees the, the wisping smoke that is coming off of your pauldron where the armor broke, you say that you are a nobody, just a commoner, just a person, just Nothing. Who really are you? I'm death. I'm what's left. After death. And Lafton's going to remove his helmet, uh, revealing his destroyed face there's at this point especially at this point um just hardly anything left of uh Lauston's face as it's mostly just dark magic and smoke making up the rest of it where there's a little bit of skin but it's all cracked and there's bone revealed and what's left of him is mostly gone at this point he looks at you in the eyes and looks around at what is left of you and says, You're Lauston. I have been called Lauston. I am no longer Lauston. Looks around at Tylor, who is visibly confused. As the last time Tylor saw you, you looked nothing like this. He looks back at you and says, Well, the last time I saw you, you did say that you had nothing to do with the Spectre, and he was the last thing that you wanted to be with or be part of his organization. Clearly, you have these strong feelings. That is one thing I guess you were not lying about. You were very honest in that because... Whatever's going on appears to be ripping and destroying you from the inside out. I'm not supposed to exist. And what's motivating you? What is giving you this drive? What is giving you this attitude, this passion? Defeating the other things that are not meant to be on this world anymore. The other undead creatures who are roaming this planet. And that is why I'm so passionate about you feeding them. It's like feeding a beast and en endless hunger. Destroying the Spectre is all I want. And I believe that that is all you want as well. He continues to scan the surroundings, visibly confused. You can tell he is still gripping his sword very tightly. Very frustrated, very emotional in this moment, not knowing what to do, where to go, or even what to think of. He just look back down at you and says, that is what your cause is. That is what you truly want. Then I suggest you follow through with your goal. If you think that you can handle the Spectre, then take him out. It would be my 
dream come true. That's my plan. We came here, my group and I, my friends, my companions, we came here to seek your elite, your, your, your ally, uh, your hand in companionship. To work I wanted together. nothing more than to work together with whoever came our way with the information that they had. But when I'm given the disrespect that I've been given, amongst all the other emotions and decisions that I've had to make, constantly thinking about all the people that die because of the decisions that I made, surely it must be part of you that understands where my frustration comes from. Sorry, I don't have the time to care, you must understand. Look at me. I'm not long for this world. I am here to do one thing. Save not only my friends, but as many people as possible. And that has to count for something. And leaders like yourself do not have the luxury of pride. And being afraid when people say mean words to disrespect you. Neither of us have that luxury of time. It is time we work together. Perhaps part of you is right in the fact that we need to work together and maybe I was hastily deciding decisions on emotion, and perhaps you came off maybe a little too emotional as well due to your deep burning passion and whatever is going on with you. But I must say one thing, and that is you are correct when you say you are death and you are a monster. Well, now I believe you after seeing what you're becoming. I will develop some sort of plan, some sort of action, some sort of itinerary for you. That is what you want. But for now, I must uphold the law. When you are ready, and I am ready, I will summon you out of your cell. And then you will find the specter under my terms and do with him as you please. Lauston is going to lift up a hand and grasp his sword in his hand as tight as he can and look up and say, on one condition, I will work with, I will work with you get me to the specter i will kill him but you leave my companions out of this they had nothing to do with this quarrel the three of them tyler your son needs your support do we have a deal the friends will stay out of it for now, you will go to one of the cells until you are summoned, and I find the way to get you to Haxos for you to do this job that you are promising me. You have my word that my elites and my guards will bring no harm or intrusion to your friends on this arrangement. But if I come to summon you and find that you are not in your cell where I am putting you for the time being until we come up with how we are going to get you there and the plan, then the deal is off. Very well. And Lauston stands and just holds his hands out to be bound. See that the... Only the Sentinels will be able to. Yeah, you see the elites, they, uh, you know, out of, like, their chest area, they kind of, like, open up, and you see they pull, like, the weird, like, shackles, and they kind of, like, they begin to 
walk you out of room. And then Vasori says one thing, you know, here, and they the sentinel stop and they turn you around. He says, as much as this was on the wrong foots and this conversation turned the way that it did, part of me does need to thank you for whatever this was to help me think a little more clearly. However, I said, when you attack a king, you still must uphold the law. I know what you have to do. It makes sense. I will see you soon. They walk you out. We get to walk you down the spire. When you get to the base level of the spire, you can see that sentinels continue to go to a back kind of like door that's in the back of the building that reveals more stairs that kind of go down. You assume this would be the cellar area. Let's switch back over to Aaron, Luna, and Dorthos. You are heading to the spire. What is the game plan from you three? Do we see Lauston being escorted by the... Uh... He is inside the building. Unless you guys are like... Are you guys just walking right into the spire? That's what Zorthos wanted to do, That's right, Zorthos? You You're muted, Zorthos. My bad. Uh, yeah, I, I'd be walking right through. I think I I've already say, made my decision yes, that would, we okay. need to help him. So I would say probably like as he is like, you know, making his way down to the bottom of the stairs, like this was all happening at the same time. He was talking, getting arrested. You guys were kind of like converging. The door is open as you, uh, Zorthos, I'm not sure if Aaron and Luna go with. If not, then you're, you're back. Uh, you would see. Zorthos. Oh, no, we got his back. Okay. You Hell would yeah. see that Lawson is in like shackles of sorts. As you see two sentinels or elites are walking him downstairs and leading to the back um, of the building where it looks like they are revealing some sort of like stairway that goes down further underground. Pulling out my bow. Knocking an arrow. Oh, oh hey, well. What? We're not doing that. We need to go talk. You guys got to stop. No fighting. He's right there. Yeah, I see him. Uh, I see him. I'm going to go talk to uh, the Duke. Oh, so uh, you rush upstairs. Uh, you know, just kind of like Lawson, you would I'm definitely Lawson. You would see Aaron Luna and Zorthos that as they walk into the spire. I'm not sure if you say anything to them or not. If it, it, if I see them coming, I'm just going to put up my hands, gesturing to not engage. I don't. It, I don't. Wait, did I see Aaron try to knock that arrow like real quick? Or was I that imagine before? not, because they were probably like as they opened the door. Right. I'm assuming kind of like Dorothy's opened the door. They saw you come down the stairs. First thing Aaron did was probably like have his bow at the hand and like get ready with it, and then like, oh, Zorthos 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 was like, like no. And yeah. Just to be clear, Lauston is wearing his helmet once again. He would have put that back on as soon as it, that moment with the Duke ended. Oh yeah, so they yeah, are, yeah that. just so that everybody's clear on, on that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Is, is, uh, a story I did not want to see, did not want anybody else to see you, essentially. Yeah. yeah. What you actually are. <clears throat> um, so, Zorth, or Lawson, again, you kind of see them, you kind of, like, put your hands up to halt and, and kind of attack that's coming, but Zorthos, you said you rush upstairs? I mean, I wouldn't rush, but I would head straight there. Yeah. Uh, you had, why has Luna got the exclamation point on her head? Are you tr that, the equivalent of you raising your hand? Yes. yes. Okay, gotcha. Um, I, I'm gonna tell, uh, just send a message to Lauston, are you okay and are you safe? Not yes, if you are. Okay. All right. Well, okay. I'm following Zorthos up the stairs. Okay. Also, then as soon as I establish that with Lauston, then and saw his head nod, then I would also follow. You all follow upstairs to where Zorthos is heading, back up to the top of the spire to Visoria's uh, throne room. You open the door and you see that the sentinels and the elites, the uh, soldiers, they are kind of like getting back in their century form they're kind of going back into the the wooden wall and sitting at almost like statues once again as if something has just calmed down here uh you walk in yes zorthos if it makes a difference i would knock oh the doors were they were wide they were left oh open. they were wide open yeah, okay well then i i'd give a little like hey yeah it's, it's you zorthos do, you do that and you turn you see that so where i turns around he's like on the opposite like he's closer to you now probably like 15 feet away from you and the because he kind of walked out with like laos and them he's kind of walking back at this point uh -huh. he turns around and you see like his one side of his face just like beaten to a bloody fucking pulp with like blood coming out of his mouth still jesus and he goes what 
Uh, hey, I, d I don't know what happened. I don't want problems with the crown. I respect your role. I know that you did what had to be done. And sometimes it's not perfect. But I need my war machine back. He's useless at a lot. And he's going to be even more useless in a jail cell. He's good at one thing right now, and it's revenge and killing. I, I know that we have spoke on a professional level before injustice was found. Please let me take that monster away from your kingdom and unleash him upon your enemies. And I'll kneel and put my head down. Uh, Aaron Luna, are you, I'm assuming you're standing behind Zorthos. Mm-hmm. Zora looks and he says, the monster is going to be good, put to good use. Good, I know. Uh, but with our directive. Uh, Lauston agreed to work for the crown? Lauston agreed to some things which are none of your concern. There, I mean, he is our All you partner. need to know that the deal I made with him is that you three are to stay out of it. And I'm to use him when needed, as needed, for the situation at hand. Now I suggest... For the specter. I suggest that you three find something else to do and leave this to me and the monster that will be in the cellars until he is needed. Okay. Is Tylor still here? Tylor is. You can tell that Tylor is very standoffish right now. He's still a little shaken from him finding out about <clears throat> you knowing the truth. This entire thing just went down. He told you to run. He sees you come in. He's just like sweating a little bit, uh, kind of standing in the back. Uh, but he does begin to like slowly approach. Um, I hadn't announced to Tylor about me finding out about you know what. You hinted at it pretty well in one of the episodes. You was like, yep, yeah, spoke to the specter. And you like looked at your dad. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, like, it, it clicked with him. He's like, fuck. Um, Tyler does approach, though, and he kind of like, Lord of Asura, I will, I'd like to have a moment with a son and his friends while you take care of yourself. Asura nods and walks back. Tyler stands there. He goes, you need to understand that I was in a very tricky position just now. This is the king, the lord, the duke of Elvenglade, of our kingdom. I can't just I turn against him. I understand you. After you get done with after you get done with this, and just kind of like eyeballing, looking around, do I see the one that the elite that I smacked up a couple times? It was uh, one of the ones that was walking Lawson down. Okay. So okay, when you get done with this, come meet me at the. If I'm floating still tree. around, at the floating tree tavern. I can do that because I feel we have much to discuss. I feel like there's much you've found out that we need to air out. Yeah. Very well. He looks at the rest of you and says, "Your friend. We now know that that is Lauston. What is left of him." Just know the deal he made doesn't involve any of you that you will be safe. He made a promise to Lord Vasori. We are entrusting that that promise will be upheld. The blow that Vasori took from him, as you can tell, did a quite a number on him. Very powerful. I just like look past Tylor and look over at the Spectre, or the Duke of Sorai. Right. He's fucked up. So. He's got a singe mark on the back of his neck, and you saw, like, from his face, when he looked, it was just, like, all bloody and beaten to a pulp. Healing word. You healing word him? Yeah. Uh, how much? I'll I'll follow up with the cure wounds. Well, you have to go touch him for that. Yeah, cure oh, wounds. do I? Yeah, cure wounds no. just touch. Oh. Yeah, go touch him, Aaron. Yeah, go touch, go touch him. He's had a lot of good experience with our group touching him. Oh, boy. I'll slowly approach anyways. So uh, if, you, if, if I may. By all means, he lets you pass. Yeah. Um, if he messes with you, I get to Hercules, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you heal him up. Okay, you, you see okay. that the singe mark in the back of his neck begins to kind of like heal up a little bit from where Lawson grabbed him. Okay. And he just looks and goes, thank you. 
Um, then he turns as he gets healing word. He sees you, Aaron, approaching. Goes, yes. Uh, just if I may. Uh huh. Just I'm just gonna like touch right beside the swelling, not directly on it, but just beside it. It's just, like cure wounds, give him back ten hit points. It doesn't do really much because he did get hit for fifty to the face. But it does, yeah, I know, like, but it does close some of the cuts a little bit. Uh, I guess. Yeah, it's just going to take more than some minor magic, but thank you. Again, the three of you. Your mm -hmm. friend kept you out of this. The deal we made, I suggest you keep it that way. I have a feeling you'll contact us when, uh, when it comes time for him to hold up his end of the bargain, I guess. When he holds up his end of the bargain, has nothing to do with you three. The deal was you stay out of it. I'm telling you all now, as an order from me, stay away from him. You stay away from Spire. You let me do my job as he is telling me to do. And you do your job. And stay out of our order and our directive. You have done your due diligence for the kingdom. You have delivered to us very important information, and I am grateful for that. And now I'm asking you and telling you and ordering you to stay out of the way for the rest of the time. And let me or friend take care of this. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for having us. Uh, quick, quick little shallow bow and turn around, walk out. <laughs> You all walk out and head down the spire with the collective information at hand. Um, and your father does walk out with you, Aaron. He says, well, I will. <coughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Austin gang, gang, gang. Jesus Christ. Well, give me some time and I'll meet you at the floating tree. Okay. Uh, he kind of like reaches his hand out for a handshake. Don't. No, not right now. All right heads back upstairs as he walks you out real quick we'll do one more thing with Zorthos so with you constructing this plan uh -huh. what do now oh yeah it seems like a dumb plan I'm not doing that plan anymore I agreed I'm leaving yeah I wanted to talk to him to see if he was reasonable he's not and it seems like Lauston has agreed to do what he wants to do and if he's gonna be honorable then who am I to stand in the way that's what Zorthos thinks I guess Zorthos needs to get to access and start taking care of actual business I was about so, to say we're, 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 we're still going out to kill the specter though right oh for sure okay for sure, for sure. Now, because Lauston is by himself, now I have to kill the specter so that my friend doesn't go get himself murdered. So yeah, now I have a reason to kill the stupid specter. Aaron, we're definitely killing him. If I'm going to put this fucking field trip back together, that's what it's going to take? Fine. Yeah, we'll go beat the shit out of specter, and then we're going to do shit I like, like fucking rob people at taverns. <laughs> or there's going to be some fucking changes around here. <laughs> Okay. If that's what they want, if the king wants it that way, we want it that way, Lausa wants it that way, fine. Maybe it is time to start stabbing people. And I'm down. Damn, son. Hell yeah. So, Lauston, you are led to the cellar, to where the cells are, the jailhouse of Elvenglade. Yes. It's dark, it's dreary, it's wet, you hear the drips, and there's very little lighting in here. You only near silhouettes of other people that you see that are in the cells, prisoners, captives, some dwarves, actually, that were part of the assault on Elvenglade. Um, however, you do see that they are not being treated poorly, more or less here for questioning and holding, whereas there are some others that are not dwarves, like some elves that are like true criminals. You can tell that they're doing their best here to try to get answers, but also withhold people from doing a thing suspicious until they get more reasoning and answers. They take you to the back of the cell, almost at the back wall. A pretty long hallway, probably about 300 to 400 feet long. Cells on all sides, very dark. There's one final cell that the elites open up for you, and they close it. Are they rough? Like the elites? Yeah, are they, like, rough with me? <clears throat> no, they're not. 
They're not. They're okay. not like. They're not like bullying you. They're just like. They're just, just making of, sure. They're guiding you. You know. Just curious. Um, because you were being very compliant. It's not like they take you by force. Uh, they open the cell up as you. They kind of like direct you in. They do take the shackles off of you. Um, with the understanding, you know, uh, with the deal we made with the Duke, that you are going to be patient and wait. And they close the cell, and you see that as it closes, they kind of like put a lock down on it. You see they kind of like wave their hand across it, and you see like a flash of like blue light pulsates on it, as if it's some sort of like magical seal of sorts. And we're in the cell. There's very little in here. There's nearly a bed, sink, a bucket. Standard for their prisoners. It's quiet. There's no sunlight that comes in here. Very dark. Do you have dark vision? No. Okay. Through the glimmer of light that you can barely see, the one or two torches that are within this entire cell, do me a favor and roll me perception check. <laughs> that I can do. Perception 11, 8 plus 3. <laughs> 11, you said? Yeah. Okay. With an 11, you kind of look to the cell next to you, and you hear, like, the, like a, like a tapping of a foot repeated over and 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 over. Almost really fast-paced. Yes. Well, it appears that they brought somebody else in here. Oh. Uh, yes. I, uh, look, I'm, I'm resting right now. Can I help you? Uh, come here. I can't see you. It's very dark in here. Come closer. Lauston's going to reluctant, because I assume, like, as soon as Lauston goes inside and get, gets his bearings, he would have sat down and, like, on his knees. Yeah. He would have gotten on his knees and, like, started sentry mode, but at this point now he's going to just, like, groan, get up, and be like, what? You go to the opposing like cell bars where you, can, you can't really see too much, very dark. But as soon as you approach, right in front of your face, you see a massive smiling face and rabbit ears. That is like up on the bars, holding himself up and goes, Well, hello there. I'm Mr. Tibbs. I'm also in much trouble. Ugh. They found me out in the woods, stealing and thieving, and they threw me in the here. What did you do? A lot. <laughs> it appears that we're stuck in here together. We shall be friends. I guess so. Right. Anyways, my name is Mr. Tibbs. Who are you? You can call me... Call me Lauston. Hi, Lauston. I'm Mr. Tibbs. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tibbs. I've been here for seven days, 47 hours, and three days, and three weeks. I can't do time very well. I've been here for a while. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a lot of information really quickly, Tibbs. I, uh... I was supposed I, to go on trial, but I guess there was an attack in the city, and they put my trial back, so I'm just sitting here waiting, very patiently. I want to get out of here one day, but, you know. I also want to get out of here, Tibbs, but I... I think it'll be a little time before any of us get out of here. There's well, perhaps if we're on. lucky, we'll get out of here together, and maybe be the best of friends. Yeah, Tibbs, yeah. And Lauston, who has actually really taken a, a beating, is going to just, like, put a hand up on the cell and be like, yeah, we're going to be the best of friends. And he's going to go and return to the center of the room and take a knee and, and go into sentry mode. Absolutely great. I will continue to sharpen my teeth for more best friends and go on adventures together. As you hear just the grinding of, like, teeth <laughs> against, like, <laughs> like a metal bar. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I had a massive sword with me, but they took it away, saying that I was a danger to them. Oh, did they? Is that what they said? Yes, they did. Good. Uh, that's, you know, that's that, that might be for the best. You know, they want to keep people safe down here. And Lauston's just going to start to, like, kind of take off to try and inspect to see how much damage he's actually taken. He's going to take off, like, the cloak there and everything. He's looking over and just, like, he's like, oh, you do not look very good. Oh, my God, you are covered in... Oh, no, that is not very good at all. Ah, you are very horrifying. Yeah, well, Tibbs, that's what happens when you no longer have 
a deity uh, to draw magic from. That's fine. I no longer have friends or family. They were all killed with people with blue eyes. I one day will get my revenge. What? And that's where we're ending this week's episode of Secrets of Altaran. <laughs> <laughs> What the actual fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn. Laos and has a cellmate that has a mutual interest. <laughs> uh, I am very confused. Oh, I like that ending. Oh, thanks everybody for watching this week's episode of Secrets of Altera, and I am Brandon the DM. Uh, if you're watching today, that means Yesterday. everybody, thank you so much. For yesterday, for the amazing event, Rolling for Red Nose Day, it was a blast. It was so much fun saying this from the past or in the future. But uh, it's, it's really crazy how Beyonce gave me that hug. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. It was wild, dude. I and wasn't the, even that, being super polite. I guess my dance moves really sold it. And the halftime show was. You killed it. The, the halftime half show. show. Dude, it was so good. You did dude, that best. split you did, you like, did, dude. Did How's your groin? <laughs> Who knew? I think Who you knew? something, bro. That was the kickstand hitting the ground. Yeah, you did the best windmill I've ever seen in my entire life. It was great. <laughs> I, yeah. That's what Beyonce said. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, but everybody, you know, the charity, uh, we are ending donations for the Red Nose Day charity um, this coming Sunday. So if you haven't seen the uh, the one shot yet, it should be still up on Twitch um, or on YouTube by like tomorrow, give or take, because of TOS rules and Twitch and blah, blah, blah. Um, so you can watch there. Enjoy the show. Uh, if you want to donate to Red Nose Day, if you didn't get to watch live, then feel free to do so. The links are over in the chat. Thank you, everybody, so much for helping us, you know, achieve our goal of doing this. It was an absolute blast. Thank you so much. Uh, Grisquatch, anything? Hi, everybody. I'm Grisquatch. I really don't know how to feel about Mr. Tibbs. That was all right. That's all I got. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, Chris's mom. Uh, Luna. Hi, it's me, Thick Pastel, and uh, pretty awesome. Everybody supporting Red Nose Day. That's great. Uh, keep doing it. You know, it doesn't stop on one just because the event's over. Yeah, that's why we're keeping everything open till Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Game Master Craig. Hi, guys. I'm Game Master Craig, and I just played mm -hmm. Blauston. And boy, I thought I was going to die. I was like <laughs> rolling stats in my head. I was like, there's an 85% chance last is going to die. But alas, <laughs> we did not die. Um, Again. No, so instead, I'm going to torture you with a herring gone in prison until you get out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Lauston's dead. I'm not playing anymore. It's a turtle Goodbye, hell everyone. for Lauston. <laughs> uh, Stakeums, what's your fun fact for the day, bud? I have no fun fact. I'm breaking bad. No fun facts for y'all anymore. I'm on a war path. Okay, so what's the actual fun fact? You don't get one. I'm a gangster now. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> you did say you're going to start being violent. Fuck this. We got to kill the specter. So yeah. My fun fact of today is the xiphoid process rests slowly below the sternum, and with enough pounds of pressure, you can break it off with a quick jab. I didn't Google that. I just know that. <laughs> That's dangerous. I hate that. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Secrets of Altair. Make sure you join the Discord. Make sure you check out all the fun stuff we're doing. Oh, and thank game. you again for everything. Oh, my God. Uh, I can't wait to... Even if it's just one episode of <laughs> Mr. Tibbs, the Heron God. <laughs> well, last time, are you ready to escape? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We're all, we'll see you we're, next we're week. We're all in agreement. We're killing that thing as soon as we <laughs> see it, right? <laughs> Listen in, the, listen, in the Star Wars game, I don't think, I'm not sure if Tetsuka's in it. In the Star Wars game, you gave us Tetsuka. I'm giving you guys Mr. Tibbs. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Grizz's mom. Bye, Grizz's mom. Bye, Grizz's mom. No fact for you.